Okay, welcome to uh, section 4.4. We're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule, which is a very useful technique for computing uh, certain types of limits. Uh, L'Hopital's rule says this. If you have a limit of a quotient of two functions, and if both the top function and bottom function are getting close to zero, so you have the indeterminate form of zero over zero, then the limit will be the same as the limit of the quotient of the derivatives of the two functions. And the other uh, form you can use it in is, is if you have, if the top function and bottom function are both getting close to plus or minus infinity, so you have the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, you can also use it. It says the limit of the quotient is equal to the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. And uh, of course this second, uh, this limit might be easier to compute. So if you have any of these, either of these two forms, you can uh, use L'Hopital's rule. What we're going to show later on is if you have these other, any of these other five, you can cleverly change the form from one of these other five to these first two, but ultimately you have to have it in either zero over zero or infinity over, over infinity. Let's look at this example. The, the key to this section is trying to I, identify what form the limit has. Here the top and bottom are both getting close to zero, aren't they? So L'Hopital's rule says, by the way you can write this little h here, that just says you're using L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the top or the derivative of the bottom. Now what, what form does that have? Well, the top is getting close to zero, the bottom is getting close to negative one. That's not indeterminate. That's equal to zero, isn't it? So the answer is zero. Let's try another one. Okay, now L'Hopital's rule, uh, you'll see it a lot next quarter. It can also be used when x is going to infinity. That's the way you're probably going to see it in the, in, in the future, mainly. So, um, but, but it still applies. So what form does this have? Well, the top is getting close to infinity, so is the bottom. So when you apply L'Hopital's rule to this, uh, you get uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over 2x. What form does that have? Well, it still has infinity over infinity. So no one said you couldn't apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. Take the derivative of the top or the derivative of the bottom. Now what form does that have? It turns out it doesn't have infinity over infinity anymore, the bottom is just 2. So if the top's getting close to infinity, the bottom's getting close to 2, the answer is infinity. Alright, let's do some more here. Okay, now in this problem, what form does it have? As x goes to 0 from the right, isn't the first factor getting close to uh, 0? And the second factor is getting close to negative infinity. We, we just say infinity there, we don't worry about the ne negative sign when we talk about the form. So you cannot apply L'Hopital's rule to this. Or can you? Let's, let's be clever here. Let's rewrite uh, this limit. If you move the sign down to the denominator and call it 1 over sign, I know that looks messy, but it turns out, what form does it have now? Well, the top is getting close to infinity. And since sign is getting close to 0, 1 over sign is getting close to infinity also. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this uh, limit. And so the derivative of the top or the derivative of the bottom, notice the derivative of 1 over sine x becomes uh, negative 1 over sine squared times cosine of x. Now if you simplify that a little bit, notice you're going to have a sine squared on top and x and a cosine x on the bottom. What form does that have? Well, the top is getting close to 0. The bottom looks like it's also getting close to 0. Why not apply L'Hopital's rule a second time? When you do that, don't forget to use the product rule on the bottom and you get uh, the top is getting close to zero the bottom is getting close to zero plus one isn't it so the answer is just zero alright let's look at this one uh, again here's another example of, of one that does not fit the two forms for L'Hopital's rule the, the first term is getting close to infinity isn't it and so is the second so we have infinity minus infinity here uh, which is not zero, is it? That's an indeterminate form. So what we're going to do is be clever. We're going to simplify this and get the LCD. The common denominator is x minus 1 times the natural log of x. So we ask the question again, now what form does it have? Well, isn't that getting close to zero? As x gets close to 1, isn't that getting close to zero? Isn't that, in the, in the bottom, each of these is getting close to zero also. So we have zero over zero. We can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. When you, when you do that, You, uh, on the bottom, you have to use the product rule, so you get uh, x minus 1 times 1 over x plus 1 times natural log of x. Now I'm going to use a sneaky algebraic trick here. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x. If you multiply the numerator by x, doesn't this become 1 minus x? 
And if you multiply the denominator by x, doesn't it cancel this one? And you pick up an x times the natural log of x. So however you do it, you want to simplify it. So the question of the day seems to be, what form does this have? Well, the numerator is getting close to zero, and so is the bottom, because this becomes zero, and this is getting close to zero as well. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. And when you simplify that, x times 1 over x is 1. So we, ha we have negative 1 over 2 plus nat natural log of x. And since nat natural log of x gets close to 0, the answer is negative 1 half. Okay, in this example, notice uh, uh, we have something to a power. And the base is getting close to infinity as x goes to infinity. And the exponent is getting close to 0. So this actually fits the form infinity to the 0. Now this method I'm going to show you to... Uh, to compute this limit, um, is uh, it's going to work for any of those last three inde indeterminate forms whenever you have something to a power, okay? The first step is to let y be the function, and we take the natural log of both sides. So uh, the natural log of y becomes 1 over x times the natural log of e to the x plus x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first find the limit as x goes to a of the natural log of y. Let, let's, let's just say this limit exists and it equals l then the limit as x goes to a of y is going to be e to the l because of the definition of logs. Okay, So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to first find the limit of the natural log of y. So if you look at the nat natural log of y, you get this limit. Now notice, as x goes to infinity, since e to the x plus x goes to infinity, the natural log is also going to infinity because it's an increasing function, right? And the bottom is getting close to infinity, so it has the form infinity over infinity. You can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. When you apply L'Hopital's rule, the derivative of the top by the chain rule, you get e to the x plus 1 over e to the x plus x. The bottom is just 1. So when you simplify, you get this. Now, what, what form does this have? As x goes from infinity, this is infinity over infinity, isn't it? So you can apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. And you get derivative of the top is e to the x, derivative of the bottom is e to the x plus 1. What form does this have? Infinity over infinity. So you can apply L'Hopital's rule yet a third time until you get e to the x over the x, which is just 1, so th this limit just turns out to be 1. But we're not done. We're not done because we found the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of y. Remember what I said? If, if, if the limit of the nat natural log of y is l, then the limit of y is going to be e to the l. So the limit as x goes to infinity of y is e to the 1, which is e. Okay. Let's do some more. This one is the same idea, although the form's different. What form does this one have as x goes to 0 plus, at the tangent of 2x to the x, isn't the base getting close to 0? And the exponent's also getting close to 0. So the same process works though. If you let y be the function, and then you take the natural log of both sides, you get this. And we're going to first find the limit as x goes to 0 plus of this function, and then at the end we're going to take e to whatever that limit is. Okay, so when you take the limit as x goes to a of the nat natural log of y, we're taking, talking about this limit, so what form does it have? The first factor is getting close to zero. Notice that um, the tangent is getting close to zero, but so the natural log is going to get close to negative infinity. We call this zero times infinity form. Remember what, what to do there? Uh, you're going to take that x and you're going to rewrite it as one over x on the bottom. So that converts it to the form infinity over infinity. And um, then you can apply L'Hopital's rule to this. It gets to be kind of a mess you get uh, 1 over tangent 2x times secant squared 2x times 2, and you get negative 1 over x squared on the bottom. Um, you can simplify that a little bit if you move the x squared up to the top. And also, I find it helpful to um, write it in terms of sines and co co cosines. You, you can write secant and tangent in terms of sines and cosines, and you get this. So, now what form does this have? Uh, as x goes to 0 plus, the top is getting close to 0. Since you have a sign here, that also get, the bottom gets close to 0 as well. So you can apply L'Hopital's rule again. It gets to be kind of a mess. You've got to use the, pro the product rule on the bottom. But notice, when you simplify the bottom, you get this. And you see that cosine squared there? As x goes to 0, this is going to get close to 2. So the top is getting close to 0. This is getting close to 2. This is getting close to 0. So, so the final answer is 0. All right, let's do one, one more. Uh, last thing I want to say here is, when, when you're doing these problems, ju just make sure that you check the form. Don't just jump to L'Hopital's rule. Uh, in this problem, the top is getting close to 0, but the bottom is getting close to 1. So L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply. 0 over 1 is just going to be 0. All right, we'll see you later.